While the world's attention has focused on submarines and stealth fighters, a quieter but equally revolutionary project is emerging between the United Kingdom and Australia. It is not about platforms, but about how weapons are built. The Copperhead Project, signed in August 2025, represents a new way of thinking about guided weapons, modular, affordable, and sovereign. For both nations, it could redefine how Western democracies design, test, and produce precision systems in an age of contested supply chains and accelerating technology. The roots of Copperhead lie in the hard lessons of the Ukraine war. Western militaries discovered that stockpiles of guided munitions could evaporate in months, while industrial capacity lagged years behind. Canberra and London both realized that buying from the U.S. was no longer enough. Australia launched its Guided Weapons and Explosive Ordnance Initiative to build a domestic missile ecosystem. The U.K., facing similar challenges, started Project Breakstop to produce low-cost loitering munitions and one-way effectors. Copperhead emerged as the natural bridge between these two national efforts, an R&D framework to develop modular guided weapons that can be designed, built, and iterated rapidly by allies themselves. The agreement was formalized on the 22nd of August 2025 between the UK Ministry of Defence and the Australian Department of Defence. Its aim is to develop an open architecture for guided weapons, allowing interchangeable guidance kits, warheads, and propulsion systems to be fitted across multiple platforms. The project merges two complementary technologies, Australia's Sharktooth algorithm, a low-cost precision navigation and targeting system, and Britain's modular weapons testbed, which allows developers to simulate, integrate, and test new designs in a software-driven environment. Together, they form the backbone of a truly modern production concept, one that treats missiles more like code than hardware. The industrial design of Copperhead is as strategic as its technology. Britain contributes simulation environments, sensors, and software development. Australia provides physical assembly, live fire testing, and production lines. Lockheed Martin Australia's new facility at Avalon Airport near Geelong will serve as a key hub for assembling GMLRS rockets for HIMARS launchers using tooling and equipment transferred from the United States. Meanwhile, South Australia has invested heavily in proving ranges and testing facilities at Woomera and Port Wakefield, creating a vertically integrated ecosystem for guided weapons manufacturing. This division of labor is more than logistical, it's political. Both governments want to ensure that no single point of failure can paralyze production in a crisis. In other words, Copperhead is not just about technology, it is about sovereignty. What makes Copperhead distinctive is its philosophy of modularity. Rather than developing one bespoke missile at enormous cost, the partners are building a system that can adapt to different missions – anti-ship, land strike, or suppression of air defenses – by changing the software and payloads. The approach mirrors the LEGO logic seen in modern fighter avionics and unmanned systems, where open interfaces and rapid software updates replace slow bureaucratic procurement cycles. For democracies with limited industrial scale, such flexibility is priceless. It allows small production runs to remain relevant as threats evolve. Copperhead also connects directly to other UK and Australian innovation streams. Britain's Dragonfire laser program, which has achieved 50 kilowatt class precision beam power, is being integrated into the same digital architecture for targeting and tracking. Likewise, Australia's GBUO effort and AUKUS Pillar 2 technology network rely on the same C4ISR backbone that Copperhead will feed. In essence, the project is less about a single missile than about creating a shared digital and industrial language, a common foundation that future weapons, sensors, and drones can all speak. Strategically, Copperhead gives both countries more than just independence. It transforms their place within the AUKUS alliance. While the submarine program remains the flagship of AUKUS, the real industrial innovation is happening under Pillar 2, 
which focuses on AI, autonomous systems, and precision weapons. In this domain, London and Canberra are the co-developers, not customers. Each side contributes unique strengths, Britain's defense laboratories, experience from MBDA, and missile integration with Royal Navy platforms, Australia's growing industrial base, testing environments, and proximity to Indo-Pacific operational theaters. The result is a distributed, resilient industrial chain that strengthens both nations while reducing dependence on U.S. export controls. Yet, Copperhead's promise also exposes familiar challenges. Technically, building modular systems requires tight standardization across hardware, software, and security protocols. A difficult task when two national bureaucracies are involved. Financially, shared ownership of intellectual property and export rights can become contentious as each government seeks to protect its domestic industry. Politically, both nations face competing priorities. The UK struggles with defense inflation and post-Brexit budget pressure, while Australia navigates regional sensitivities, particularly China's reaction to any visible military integration between Commonwealth partners. Beijing has already criticized the project as an industrial militarization of AUKUS, though the reality is far more pragmatic. Both countries are simply trying to survive in an era where weapons must be built faster than they can be fired. Looking toward 2035, Copperhead could become the template for an entire family of modular strike systems. In one scenario, the same guidance and control package could be fitted to a loitering drone, a naval missile, or a land-launched weapon. Integration with systems like HIMARS, NASAMS, or even the Royal Navy's Type 26 frigates would allow common targeting data and interchangeable payloads. This would extend the concept of sensor to shooter across domains, air, land, and sea, creating a single digital strike grid within the AUKUS network. The benefits go beyond combat effectiveness. Modular weapons could be updated by software patches, dramatically reducing costs and allowing continuous evolution without full redesigns. The long-term vision is therefore industrial, not just military. By 2030, both nations want to localize a significant share of missile components, electronics, and guidance units. For the UK, this revives a defense manufacturing base eroded since the Cold War. For Australia, it represents a generational leap from buyer to builder. And by exporting certain Copperhead-derived systems to trusted partners such as Canada or New Zealand, the UK-Australia axis could form the nucleus of a broader AUKUS technology commons, a defense ecosystem that trades ideas and code, not just hardware. Ultimately, Copperhead is not a missile. It is a philosophy. It embodies a shift from procurement to co-creation, from dependence to partnership. In an age when hypersonics and drones dominate headlines, the deeper contest is industrial. Who can design, test, and field precision weapons faster and cheaper? For London and Canberra, Copperhead is the answer, a blueprint for how medium powers can stay relevant in a high-tech arms race without surrendering sovereignty. If AUKUS submarines are the hammer, Copperhead is the chisel, precise, silent, and adaptable. Together, they mark the start of a new industrial era for the UK and Australia, one where guided weapons are written, not welded, shared, not sold, and always ready for the next update.